What's up everyone, Jonas Landwehr here for Thoman Synthesizers, back with another edition of Source Comparison. So the last days I was thinking about how I can translate the easiest way what I have musically in mind into drum machines and synthesizers which are not coming with a built-in step sequencer or a piano scale. Mainly I was using Ableton's internal MIDI clip generator for this but this of course has some limitations to it if you only work with the PC or laptop mouse. So then I did some research about standalone sequencers which I could hook up to my gear and by this research I came across not only sequencers but trackers. So let's find out which of both machines can do what and if you are a tracker or a sequencer kind of producer. First off, I brought one of the classic sequencers in the game, the infamous Döpfer Darktime. Typical for a sequencer is its horizontal pattern steps. The Darktime is coming with two rows with each eight steps. These steps have knobs to twist for the pitch and moreover you can choose to play, jump or stop at each step. So let's connect it to my modular system to check out how much we can bring out from these two rows and if we can create a full jam with it. The dark time got the MIDI out, but in this case I'm going for the individual CV and gate outputs for both pattern rows to have more possibilities in my patches. For the lead I'm using Akemi's Castle, a really awesome dual FM oscillator module by ALM Busy Circuits. And if you're into the Eurowave game, I really recommend this brand. They make really great stuff such as the Mummade filter, a filter in cooperation with Mumdance, as well as the Pamela's new workout and more. To have a bit of depth in the track, the upper row of the dark time is sent to oscillator A and the bottom row is sent to oscillator B of Akami's Castle. Next up in the signal chain is Akami's going into the Magasmaton filter by Intelligel and the Wiertz VCA by Mutable Instruments. In the Wiertz VCA I combine both oscillator signals which are going then together into the herb verb by make noise which is my most favorite reverb at the moment because you have full accessibility to modulate everything in it so you can modulate the delay the pre-delay uh, the speed of the reverb tail and of course the size of the reverb tail what we can do now is using the gate signals the dark time is able to send and i'm going to use this to trigger this little brain here the ornament and crime in peaked mode to generate Euclidean rhythms with it. From this I'm going to trigger the rample sample, the pico noise and half of a syncussion, the SY0.5, which is a stunning percussion module. Alright, let's get into the patch. First up, oscillator A of Akemi's castle feed it from the upper row of Dopfer Dark Time. So I said I was going for something more like techno-ish, fast repetitive pattern. We can transpose this row, like above, zero or one octave down. And the direction we can have up, random or down, this is up. This is more random or down. Up would be in this direction. Alright, so. We can play a little bit with the oscillator itself because it has the opportunity to have like some chords going on. I think this sounds quite old schoolish technology. Going into the filter and the VCA. The filter also feed it from the envelope and the VCA feed it from the envelope. This is without the envelope, just full cut off or a bit like plucky going from the envelope. Let's bring in the kick coming from the syncussion. So here's the kick. Let's bring the pico in. The 
into the groove, also feed it from the Euclidean rhythm. Going into the Rainmaker by Intelligel to have some delay. Some resonances in the acid section for the oscillator. And let's open the reverb for the lead. Let's play with the filters a little bit. And let's change the kick drum pattern to something more offset. Alright, let's change to the tracker and maybe for some of you this term is as new as it was for me at the beginning of my research. So what is it? The big difference between a sequencer and a tracker is its vertical timeline and by this we have more possibilities and parameters on each step. A tracker refers to a class of music sequencer programs that emerged in the 1980s in the context of the Commodore Amiga computer. A company which brought trackers back into the game is Polyant with their version of a tracker. Recently they also put out some special artist versions which come along with different optics and extended sample packs by each chosen artist. So let's check it out. In combination with my beloved Mono Machine, a bit older piece by Electron but I still love it until today. My idea was now to send MIDI sequences or signals from the poly end tracker to the mono machine. So let's fill in a step. Easy as that, you have to press record and then you can choose in between note or instrument. Here you have the opportunity to fill in 50 different instruments per project. And from the 50th on, you will find the MIDI channels. So there we go. Let's choose a note now. Let's go for maybe F3. Let's fill in a second one. Maybe here, also sending to the mono machine and maybe also F3. So I set the mono machine into arpeggiator mode. Let's check it out. And let's play with the parameters of the mono machine a little bit in the arpeggiator mode. And let's open up another track. So the poly end tracker is able to record samples live. And my idea was now to record what I was doing with the Moon Machine inside the poly end tracker and then arrange it in a track. So for this, let's get ourselves into the sample recorder, press here. And then all we have to do is actually just record and play. Let's save this and we can actually auto name it. Let's go for something maybe, yeah, dessert texture, spiritual song. Yeah, difficult honey, why not? Save it. So let's change our project here. For this, we go into the files 
and we open another project I made filled in with a little bit more drums etc because this would take otherwise too long now. Let's get ourselves into the sample loader and for this we go into the recordings, enter and then we add difficult honey to it. So now I want to crop it a little bit and for this we have to go into the sample editor and then choose crop and we set the start a little bit forward so that it's directly hitting on the one. And let's go back to our pattern. I would like to add some effects now. And in the poly end tracker, it's able to add effects on a sample in two different ways actually. We can either do it directly on the sample and then the problem is we can't hear it in real time. So I'm going to choose the second option to put effects on our track. So in here we can yeah, choose in between note instrument and two effects. Let's go for FX1. And there we can see we have volume, panning, micro tuning, micro moving, tempo, roll, chance, and a lot more. Yeah, let's go maybe for a more subtle one, maybe a reverb. Check it out. Yeah, this is a bit better. Let's close the reverb here a little bit again. Let's check out the whole project I made by unmuting our tracks. And that's the whole project actually. Basically, both machines are counted into the same category as pattern generators, but as their approaches are so differential from each other, I think a tracker and a sequencer both have their own right to exist as both can lead to different musical results actually. The Dub for Dark Time as a sequencer is really great at what it's doing. It's so stripped down on the functional side that this limitation forces you to push the rest to a maximum. So this limitation comes with a lot of creative flow to me. Besides that, I guess it would be quite difficult to perform live shows with it because you can really change tracks or have variations on it. But here comes the tracker into the game and this is actually its strength. By having 8 tracks with countless steps, a wavetable synth and a sampler, you are able to perform a whole track with a lot of variations. Basically, the polyend tracker is able to replace your door. But there's one more reason I like the polyend tracker so much, and this is because you can play games apparently with it. Alright, that's it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you have something that you want to have compared, simply put it in the comment section and we will check that out. So, thanks again and see you next time.